cabinet ministers and deputy speakers vociferously debate the virtues of levying an extra point ought to council tax, lambast the parish leadership for their utter failure to address the Tupgill Park badger infestation, and yes, the plans to demolish your house were on display for a full six months, Mr. Parsnip, in the basement of the abandoned cement factory behind the locked door labeled Danger of Electrocution. You can't have missed it. Because it's time to talk toll to me. And to talk we shall get. If the council member would please acquiesce to submitting to the proposal that he talk tull to us, we could begin the process of talking tull forthwith. I second the talking of Tull. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. I am Omen Sade. And I am Nick McGill. Together we are Feckless Moms. Oh, oh, yeah, and uh, this is Talk Tull to me. That's right. A heated debate in the governing body of Prague Rock in which non-fatal motion Nick and oral questioning Omen filibuster our way through every track that seminal rock band Jethro Tull has ever produced. Every album a referendum, every song a portcullis-emblazoned legislative bill, Nick and I will give our maiden speeches, pre-legislatively scrutinize the ballot bills, and hope not to see a hung parliament. Well, it depends how hung they are. All in hope that the Lord, spiritual and temporal himself, Ian Anderson, will grant us a reprieve from the whips, wool sacks, and wrecking amendments of his displeasure. Boy, all this dirty talk has made my booth mighty steamy. <laughs> Do you know, you know what the wool sack is, Nick? I, I am unfamiliar with what the wool sack is. It's a sack of wool that one of the members of the British Parliament sits on, and it, it it's a tradition going back to when wool was one of the big exports of England. Okay. And it's a sack stuffed with wool from all over the different parts of uh, the kingdom. And and he sits on it? Yeah. It's like, so it's a pillow. It's a wool sack. It's a pillow. It's a, pillow. <laughs> it's, a it's a cushion. Pardon me, I have to fluff the wool sack. But it's a, it's a if collaborative... The speaker would please refrain from <laughs> fluffing his wool sack. <laughs> it, is, it is highly distracting. <laughs> Nick, hello. Hello, Omen. Hello. How are you? It's another bright, dewy, sunny day here in the world of Talk Tall to me. That's it. We are about to take the wrapper off of a fresh, new song. New for me, at least. That's right. You have never heard this one. Before that, do we have any business to which we have to attend? I don't think that we do. I think we've, we got an email from Doc Savage that we will throw in a little bit later as it pertains specifically to this song. But I, th I think we can jump right into a town in England. What do you think, Omen? I think we should strap on our parachutes and and put on our branded Talk Tell to Me merch t-shirt and jump into that town. Can we do one of those doubles? Parachutes where, where I strapped you like a baby. Oh, Bjorn. a tandem shoot? Yeah. yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay, idea. perfect. Okay. We can also do a tandem t shirt if you want. <laughs> Just a really, well, I'll order the extra, extra large and then we'll use another one for a parachute. Yeah, that's right. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. So, Nick. <laughs> yeah, Soman. Shall we have a listen to A Town in England? Let us. The bonus track, one of the bonus tracks off of Heavy Horses. Heavy Horses. Wow, still Heavy still, Horses. It's like ages ago that we actually listened to anything off of the album proper. It's it's a lot like when we did War Child with all those bonus tracks as well. But uh, going forward, yeah. we, we're not going to have nearly as many prolific bonus tracks. So we got two more after this week, and then we'll be done with Heavy Horses on to Stormwatch. But this week, it is A Town in England. Omen, first time hearing that, what are your thoughts? I love it. So good. What a cool sound that song has, right? I, I As soon as it came in, I, I was like, ooh, what is yep. this treat? Yeah. So you've, you've had more time to sit with this before. Do you remember what your first impressions of it were? Probably the same. It's It's such a nice, the a lot of the, the bonus tracks we've been covering up until this point have had have been pretty electric heavy. 
Uh, but this is a nice acoustic sound that we I feel like it's been a while since we've heard, maybe since Heavy Horses proper, honestly. And it's just, I don't know, there's some there's a unique sound to this tune that really, really piques my interest. Yes. There's something, Nick, I'm going to say something that, that I, I hope is going to be unpopular. Oh, okay. And, but, and I, I, I want you to do, I want, I want you to tell me genuinely what you think about this. You're about your opinion right now. Yeah. Okay. This reminds me of like the mid to late nineties kind of American punk sound. <sighs> I, do you know how I feel about that? <laughs> Tell me. Confused. <laughs> okay, not not punk like the heavy hard punk, but like the sort of like the sort of post punk resurgence that was that was you know on the edges of the hardcore scene. There's a band that I'm that I'm trying to. What was their what was their name? Any names would be helpful to place a reference. I ain't no rat. Is that the name of the band? No. <laughs> Get out of here, Kappa. What are you talking about? I, I ain't spilling the beans. <laughs> oh, okay. That's what I thought you were going for. <laughs> Rough. But it's curious that you you find this punky, given how it's it's very acoustic, is very gentle. Okay, so if you look at if you look at the band against me, if you look at their early stuff. Okay. I am unfamiliar. I know the name. Yeah, but not not I, their more recent stuff, but if you look at like Obviously not the vocals, but there's there's something in the quality of the of the the music that's that's a little bit I don't know it just reminds me of that stuff but and and for that reason I love it. What was the name of that song? That was Pints of Guinness Make You Strong by Against Me. Oh, so they're they're one of those. They're one of those bands. Out of Boston, they're a pseudo Irish punk. And that's exactly what it reminds yeah. me of. Those, okay, those kind of Bostony East Coast pseudo Irishy. Gotcha. The, the flogging Molly. Flogging Molly. Yep. Yep. Okay, but it, I don't know. There's something nostalgic for me about this sound, but and, and none of that, you know, despite what your opinions on <laughs> mid '90s punk adjacent bands are, that's not a that's not a, a dig from me. I I think I love this sound. Sure, sure, sure. I I I acknowledge your feelings, Omen. Thank. You. That's a big step for you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I I mean, I guess I can see it a little bit. It's more it's more folky for me. Yes, but, but yeah, I can I can see that. It, but it is it is a super unique sound, even for tall. I feel it totally is because it's it's really heavy with it's really forward with the acoustic guitar. The drums are kicked up. Maybe it's just you know they hadn't. Maybe maybe what we're hearing is an incomplete mix. But I agree, it most certainly is like an incomplete mix. They just kind of slapped it on here, I think. But the drums being way more forward kind of gives it that that driving slightly like rougher sound. Yeah. Martin's funny little riff at the end of the verse. That one? Yeah, I love it. It's great. It's great, yeah. There's cowbell in here. We haven't heard cowbell in a very long time. Right, 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 right. Guess what? I got a fever, and the only prescription is more cowbell. So I, I appreciate that they were kind of playing with this different sound, you know, yeah. that they were putting this sound out into the universe that was going to be then picked up by the the angry East Coast Americans 30 years later. Yeah, that's clearly the inspiration. Yeah. They found it half buried in the mud and they were like, oh, who, who, what's all this then? Because we're pirates in 1997. <laughs> My great, great grandfather was Irish, maybe. <laughs> Could have been. I'm not going to tune this guitar. <laughs> I'm going to scream now. <laughs> I think <laughs> I like, I really like Ian's voice in this one. I was going to say that too. And maybe it is less affected because it is 
kind of a, it's a demo kind of feel like they were still feeling stuff out. It's clearly an unfinished song. So it's, it's less affected, but I, I do like that naturalness that when we do get these glimpses of Ian's voice like this, and it's not, it's not that different from a lot of his stuff, but there, I don't know. There's something kind of unpressured. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's him kind of just testing the waters here. I, I do like it. Yeah, it's great. I I really enjoy it. I it's a very it's a very sort of straightforward. It's it's one of the less proggy oh sure constructions of a song yeah. that we've heard in a while. Again, most likely because it is so so early on in the stages. We can get a little more explanation uh, as provided by Doc Savage since he has the new shoes set of Heavy Horses release. And just for our listeners, let's remind ourselves what is the new shoes set. The New Shoes was one of the remaster reissues of of Heavy Horses. I don't quite remember if it was the Steve Wilson or if it was the 40th anniversary, because sometimes those did not coincide. Other albums, they did coincide. So it's it's so difficult to keep track. And uh, and I, I, I thanked Doc Savage for, for providing this info, because there are so many versions of of releases and re-releases and there's just there's stuff that you and I cannot possibly keep track of and have copies of or we would be more in debt than we are so so it it, even even more so now like this this podcast has become a forum has become a collective group of individuals sharing their their pieces of knowledge to create a greater encyclopedia as it were and and doc savage is pro- is pro- a perfect example of that providing us the info from new shoes well we better watch out nick because you know what happened to caesar at the forum he did he stub his toe or something he got sliver he should have been wearing new shoes yeah he got, he got blisters because he was wearing yeah. new shoes that he hadn't broken in that's it yeah new shoes was released in 2018 it marks the 50th year of the band and the 40th anniversary of Heavy Horses is a three. Gotcha. It was a three CD, two DVD box set out of Parlophone Records. So, with all that being said, yes. the Good Doctor has written us this this little bit of information. On inspecting the cover of the new shoes set, I note the song isn't listed at all. So it's kind of an Easter egg thing, I guess. Ian's comment on it is interesting. This is clearly just a demo for what was a precursor of the song made in England which was on the 1983 Walk Into Light album. I had a verse's worth of lyrics, which I sang, but I can't remember if I'd written any more verses. I suspect not, or I would have sung those too. The tape of this song found in the record company vaults is over six minutes long, with the last five minutes comprising a rough run-through of a fledgling arrangement with acoustic guitar, bass, and percussion. It would be inhumane to subject even the most nerdy of Jethro Tull fans to the full recording, which is why it fades out after I've sung the verse. Doc Savage goes on to say, I pass that on without comment, except to inquire of a JT fan so nerdy he started a podcast whether he would like to hear the other five minutes in Tarot Bang. Have a tremendous day, Doc Savage. I... So Nick... I've got a, I've got a few things that I want to uh, pull out of there. First of all, yes, I would love to hear the other five minutes. If it's a acoustic yeah. bass and percussion, yeah, absolutely. You guys are all on top of your game. You're some of the the the, the best players of the time. Absolutely, I want to hear it. I don't care if you're just noodling. Well, and I think that we are we are in that category of nerdy <laughs> tall fans of almost masochistically nerdy tall nerds who you know we want to hear. We want to see the peek behind the curtain. We want to see what yeah. the we want to see how the sausage is made. Yeah, this is and this is not the first time I've heard Ian refer to like the most nerdy of tall fans. He acknowledges that we are, there is a contingent of us out there. He, he in several interviews I've heard him reference nerdy tall fans. Mm. And 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 finally the last thing I wanted to mention was he says it was clearly just a precursor of the song Made in England which was on the 1983 Walk into Light album. I find it a little interesting and maybe it's a bit telling that he didn't say on my 1983 solo album, Walk Into Light. Why do you find that interesting? Like, it's he's talking about a Tull song on a Tull album. Why wouldn't he 
demarcate those? Why wouldn't he differentiate well, the two, you know? I, I think that that is possibly a good point and perhaps indicative of of the way his mind works. You know, I, I suspect That's that just it, yeah. he doesn't draw a lot of distinction between the Jethro Tull albums and his solo albums and, right, the, right. and the ones that are kind of a cross between those things. You know, I think for him, it's just, you know, he's playing music. Yeah. He's writing all the lyrics anyway, so... I, I get that, but I'm not entirely sure anyone else thinks that way in terms of the fan base. And maybe there are. Maybe there are people who just lump them together, but I I do see them so very differently. Huh. Yeah. Maybe that says more about you, Nick. It's why telling. Do you, why do you feel the need to separate things so um, delicately? Huh? It's It's a matter of control. I like to have control. In all things, did you in my feel life. a lack of control as a child? Mm. Well, being kept in a closet for twelve hours a day, like there was only so much I could control. So let me show you this picture of some breasts. <laughs> hey, How do you feel? So, so, those were my breasts. <laughs> so let's let's talk a little bit about the lyrics, as as few as they are. I think sure. they're very interesting. Yeah, it's just a repetition of the same kind of paragraph here. It feels, it certainly feels better formed than the really rough cut that we had with horse hoeing husbandry. Yeah, I think it's a bit less heady and conceptual. It's, and I think yeah. it, it paints a very clear image that I would love to dive into. In a street in a town in England, not a tree-lined avenue, but a young road cracked and dusty for all sad dog ends where once oaks grew. In the streets in a town. Yeah. So let's talk about a tree-lined avenue. Sure. I feel like we've heard that line before. Feels vaguely familiar. Yeah, I feel like we have. To me, a tree-lined avenue conjures images of, you know, green spaces in metropolitan centers. Yeah. Where you have an avenue that's that's got its trees carefully curated. And because... Because there aren't so many trees in the city, you want to really make sure that the ones that are there are healthy. You know, the New York New York City has a whole forestry department, as as sort of funny as that is. Oh, do they really? They, wow. They take their trees very seriously, and I believe London does something similar. So it could be a con. It could be just making the point that this is a small town and not a big city. But it also seems to imply that there once were lots of trees here. Yeah, right. Where once oaks grew, so it kind of seems like. It's a town which has undergone some kind of fairly within living memory transformation. Yeah. Going from this really shady, lovely, tree-filled spot to dusty and having a new road put in, a young road put in and not taken care of. We have a comparison. We have two of the same thing. We have the life of this city falling into destitution. And then the next, the second half of this tiny little paragraph that we have is the the citizens of this town falling yeah, into Yeah, the effect on the residents, yep. Yeah. We wrap up with, and the old men drag down the gutters into a life and out again, wearing mm. caps pulled down like shutters on the windows of their brains. And the old men drag down the gutters into life and out again, wearing caps pulled down like shutters. That is such a strong image. It is. It really is. It's amazing what that man can do in two lines. And 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 it comes from what we've talked about a lot before, which is that observation, his ability to to take in a scene and then render it into words. Yeah. As soon as you say that, wearing caps pulled down like shutters on the windows of their brain, I immediately can think of things that I've seen everywhere. You know, no matter what country or or city or state. You see people who are down and out, who are living in and out of the gutters, and they yeah. and they have that kind of, you know, they pull their hats down over their faces a little bit to kind of block out the world. Yeah, hunched shoulders. You you create those yeah. those bulwarks, those defenses against your your neck and your mind. I mean, if you put a knit cap on the Aqualung album, like this is it. Yeah, yeah, totally. 
That's an interesting take as well. I didn't I didn't put that together until just now. Like this is another commentary on people like the character of Aqualung, you know, people in right. destitution and and living in those gutters and and living in even if it's not necessarily the whole city that is like falling apart, there are portions of cities that this certainly is symptomatic. are symptomatic. Yeah. Well, but even even the character of Aqualung is described as having desires and passions and and feelings. True, very true, yeah. These people are described as sad dog ends. So a, a dog end is a, a phrase which which means the end of a cigarette. Yeah. You know, the um, the cigarette butt. Yeah. Also, a thing a, a phrase that we hear in the song Aqualung. Right. Right, yeah. So so this where where these oaks once grew are just it's just litter. It's garbage. It's it's used cigarettes, and that litter and garbage we can see is is the human refuse as well. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Litter. Yeah. Absolutely. So, what happened to this town, Nick? I mean, I I have a feeling, given the era that these songs fell in, you know, given the era that we have heard where we are in that environmental and folk triptych that this is a sign of this is the bottom end of the bell curve when it comes to capitalism and i always forget this word when you come in and you bring bring in buildings and machines and uh, industrialization mm. this is the side that is pretty much always an inevitable side effect that people do don't really do anything to prevent and after the fact, don't really do anything to solve either. Yeah, that was my impression as well, that there was some kind of industrial event that happened here and the trees had to be removed yep. to make way for the big machinery. Yep. A new road had to be opened up, but it wasn't worth paving because they knew they were only going to use it for so long. And so it's become cracked and dusty. Yeah. And the result is, you know, the broken leftover human lives. Yeah. You know, without without having more verses, it's hard to locate this town much more precisely. I think if we had a better understanding of the the history of environmental degradation and in, and industrialization in the British Isles throughout the, <laughs> the last century, yeah. maybe we would have a better guess. But I mean, you could throw it anywhere. There's oil, there's coal, there's, I mean, you could throw it in the States too. You could throw it anywhere. I, I think that might be, I mean, 50% it might be he just didn't get too specific because he didn't build out the song, but also like this is this is in every town, you know. This is well, and that's yeah. I was just thinking that that it, it's not this town in England; it's a town in England, a town, in and England. by implication, England herself. Yeah, yeah, because because I guarantee you, it's not just a single town in England. I'm sure it's happening in other places. Hell, I mean, it could even ha- have happened in the the Isle of Skye when when the the oil rig busted for the third time and and it leaves people behind yeah, i i think there's i think there's a lot of uh resonance between i make love to you acres wild thank you i'll make love to you although that's obviously not in england oh sorry that was my ringtone let me let me get this real quick I was just having a, a profoundly important thought. Oh, I'm sorry. I, d- I interrupted it. So there's... A, it, was, it wasn't that important. Oh, okay. There's a difference between Acres Wild and... Well, and this song, in yeah. that we're describing a a town which has gone through the kind of boom and bust. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Acres Wild is the seed of the idea germinating. And this is after the the fields have have gone fallow and and the sunflower droops its head and loses its seeds. You know, it's they're two two sides of the same coin. And unfortunately, as we've seen, it's kind of an inevitability when someone comes in and says, "Oh, I'm going to change things around and I'm going to make everything great." But then this happens after s- after so long, depending on the severity of of the environmental impact and and cultural and capitalistic and industrial impact. So speaking of the kind of folk punk movement, are you familiar <laughs> with a band called The Levelers? I believe so. I think I had copies of your CDs of The Levelers. 
Okay. So they have a song called England My Home. Okay. So just just to read a little excerpt of the lyrics. Why is it England? I feel like rubbish on your streets. Why is it when I care? I feel incomplete. Why does our future seem such a feat? When will our consciousness finally meet? Oh, whatever happened to my green and pleasant land? Why is England a feel like rubbish on your streets? Why is it when I care I feel incomplete? Why does our future seem such a feat? That last line is, of course, a, a reference to Shakespeare. Yeah. I think it might be old Gaunt in Richard II, but I could be wrong. Right, right. You know, and that this song was, of course, much later. But I feel like there is, it, it has a similar feeling to it. It's that frustration at what has happened to this this place that used to be so verdant. Right. Yeah, the same thing that happens to every other one. Like, technology takes a toll, takes a serious toll on people and places and all sorts of stuff. Nick, I am officially taking out my pen to sign a petition that I have just created to send to Ian Anderson to request that he finish the lyrics to A Town in England. Because I have got to know what happens. I, I like it. I like that idea. We'll, uh, when we get him on the show, we'll, we'll ask him if he could just, just whip something up real quick in the middle of the interview. If you would like to sign the petition, it is on display, ready for your signature in the basement of the old cement factory on the outskirts of town behind a locked door that says danger of electrocution. You can't miss it. There's no excuse really for not signing it. Yeah. Won't give you the address. Please go do that. <laughs> Do we want to talk about Made in England and Walk into Light? Let me look at the look at the lyrics. And were you made in England's green and pleasant land? Oh! He accepts no unemployment and is too indeterminate station bred, is possessed of skills and reason, flies the flag upon his head, watches the democratic process grind its way through the commons cold, filled with fiery infiltrators who would pave the streets with England's gold. It's amazing to hear, you know, a fully composed tall song after all these uh, these bonus <laughs> tracks. I know, right? I I also just going back to green and pleasant land. I I I want to addendumize myself. Oh, but I'll wait till we're not on Skype to do that. It's about to get addendumized. <laughs> Addendum? Hardly know him. You brought him. You addendum. <laughs> but I do want to say that I believe that phrase is actually William Blake. Mmm, okay. The thing that I was thinking of from Richard II is this royal throne of kings, this sceptered isle, this earth of majesty, this seat of Mars, this other Eden, demi-paradise, this fortress built by nature for herself against infection and the hand of war, this happy breed of men, this little world, this precious stone set in the silver sea, which serves it in the office of a wall or as a moat defensive to a house against the envy of less happier lands, this blessed plot, this earth, this realm, this England. Oof. Oof. Oof, indeed. So, yeah. Anything else to say about... A town in England. I don't think so. I mean, honestly, for for such a short 
undeveloped song, I, I think we got a lot out of it. It's very impactful. Yeah, yeah. I think we found a lot more in than some of the, the previous songs that we've been talking about for these bonus tracks. I, I think there is enough... There's enough of a nugget there that we were able to extrapolate so much. It makes it makes me curious to think why he didn't pursue it because it was it was such a meaty thing, you know. By maybe curious makes me by curious. No, why why curious why curious? Oh, I'm sorry. Why and maybe it's just because he had so many other songs around this time that you know they kind of dipped their toes in the water of this this theme. You know, of of the destruction. He doesn't owe us anything. He doesn't owe oh no, the completion of any of any song. You know, it, this is the equivalent of us salivating over a, a discarded napkin. Yeah, a delicious discarded napkin. He sneezed into it. I don't certainly think that we we're, we're owed it. I I'm just curious as to what was the factor that that made him not pursue it. You know, I'm not saying hey hey finish it. I'm saying why? Because I'm why curious. Would you like to hear the names of some towns in England? <laughs> Sure, let's let's fill up some more time. Pimlico is one. I just I remember that from that that sketch a while ago. Warehead. Yep. Good. Good. How do you spell wear in that one? W E A R head. Okay. Cow's Hill, right next to North Pennies. Sure, of course, of course. Corn rigs. Uh-huh. Had those for breakfast. <laughs> Burn Hope Seat. I did that in college, yeah. Garagil. I wish you wouldn't call me that in public. Le- Lead Gate. Uh-huh, yep. I'm just going, I'm just literally on Google Maps. <laughs> here's, here's Dufton. There's a town called Knock. Oh, cool, okay. Oh, this is my favorite so far. Krakenthorpe. Ooh, like K- K-R-A-K-E-N or... C R A C K E N Thorpe with an E. Kraken Thorpe. Nice. Okay. I like it. I'm going to name my first child Kraken Thorpe. Um, That's nice. Yeah. Woodfoot. Okay. I don't think we need to, to go much further. I think. Let's end on Wicker Slack. Ooh. I'm glad you pushed. I'm glad you insisted on ending on Wicker Slack. No. I appreciate no. that. <laughs> Next week, we are covering, I believe I've seen it in a couple of instances that Jay Mancillo is so excited for this song. I think he's asked several times on when and where and will we be covering Commercial Traveler. Oh, well. And and in fact, we will next week. We will next week. Exciting. Next week on uh, the date will be 1026, our last before for Halloween. Until next week, I recommend that you travel all over England in search of those fallen stars by the roadside. Collect them all up. And when you have your pockets full of five of them, ship them to us by Royal Mail. There is nothing environmentally detrimental to you subscribing to our Patreon. You will not kill any any elms or oaks. There will be no dog ends littering the ground. If you wish to pull your cap down like the shutters on the window of your brain, why not make it a Talk Tult Me themed merch cap that you can pull down over your head that will protect you from the world and all of its horrible goings on? That was perfect. I don't know if there are hat options, but that was perfect. I hope there are now. Sure. (laughs) Until next week, I am the burnt out cigarette butt that is Omen Said. I am the grave of a tree that was Nick McGill. We are the gutter living, bedraggled corpses, feckless (laughs) momes. And this is the corporation conglomerate that moved in and moved out with no concern for the welfare of the civilians. Talk tell to me. Oh, 
But they say the tongues of dying men enforce attention like deep harmony. When words are scarce, they are seldom spent in vain, for they breathe truth that breathe their words in pain. He that no more must say is listened to, and they whom youth and ease have taught to blouse. More are men's end marked than their lives before, the setting sun and music at the close, as the last taste of sweets is sweetest last, writ in remembrance more than things long past, though Richard my life's counsel would not hear. My death's sad tale may yet undeaf his ear when I say, talk tall to me, is a proud member of the Feckless Mom's Audio Network. Ugh.